The general got us warmed up with a three-mile jog. Pretty standard stuff, except for the 100-pound log on our shoulders. But I don't know what was worse, the 100-pound logs or having the general and Vadim shouting at us to pick up the pace. Gym training, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. It's like the Cold War is still going on. Jogging with logs in the Russian wilderness is definitely a great way to test your strength and endurance. But it was just the beginning. Next, the general and Vadim wanted to test our technique, so they engaged us in some hand-to-hand -hand sparring drills. According to the general, these are the same hand-to-hand -hand drills that the Russian fighters have practiced since the days of Lenin. As we focused on the movement and honed our technique, we couldn't help but wonder if this is what life for a soldier in the Soviet Red Army had been like. That's when the rain started coming down. At first, I thought the general and Vadim might break for the weather, but they just pushed us that much harder demonstrating a series of counterattacks and shoulder locks that are taught to special forces soldiers throughout the former Soviet Union. Put your right arm on his elbow crease and your left one on your bicep. Put the pressure on his wrist here and pull his arm away. This is a really awesome move because you can really feel the opponent hurting. Jason, you feel that? Jason, don't you owe me some money? I owe you something, Bill, when I get up. <laughs> the rain kept coming, and we kept training. Every hour in the Russian wilderness, we could sense our Sambo skills improving. But we had miles to go if we were going to take on one of Fedor Emelianenko's men. And the general and Vadim weren't afraid to test our pain threshold. We lifted logs until our shoulders burned and did the general's version of a step workout. Oh, wow, working out with a log on your back is hard work. Mother Nature's a bitch, but Mother Russia is worse. And still we weren't done. Next, the general showed us a sort of Wing Chun workout on steroids. It battered our forearms and burned our shoulders and attuned us to the rigors of a Sambo fight. To cap it all off, it was back to the forest for another three-mile run. Only this time, instead of carrying logs, we were dodging trees on wet ground while trying to keep up with the seasoned Sambo fighters. When you have wet moss you're running on and you're weaving in and out of trees, it's a really, really hard cardio workout. You need to work your balance, your coordination. As we trained, Vadim and Ratunsky hammered home the importance of dedication and toughness, both mental and physical. It's a crucial component of any well-rounded fighter's arsenal. And the philosophy behind Sambo's most innovative forefather, Vasily Oshepkov. After studying martial arts in Japan in the early 20th century, Oshepkov returned to Mother Russia. He was determined to incorporate the throws and strikes of judo in with the native wrestling styles that had dominated early Russian martial arts. He had a lot of students from other countries like uh, Uzbekistan, Georgia, a lot of Russians who knew their own techniques, traditional uh, combat systems. You saw the similarities between them, so he started to mix it all up. Lushepkov's hybrid fighting system was what drew Lenin himself to Sambo. Although Lushepkov felt Sambo should be taught to the masses, not just the military elite. Oshepkov's populist dreams for Sambo clashed with the communist bigwig's need for military secrecy. And in 1937, he was imprisoned by the same security forces he had helped to train. A year later, Sambo became an official sport of the Soviet Union. Unfortunately, Oshepkov didn't live to see his vision for Sambo become a reality. He was shot to death in a Soviet gulag. Whether behind bars or on the field of battle, these Russian Sambo fighters have toughness, dedication, and even a willingness to die for their art. And as we continued to work with the General and Vadim, we couldn't help but feel training in the wilderness was time well spent.